Hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Josephine Fulcher Anderson, and I am the supervisor of the Ferguson Library South and Brent and the Bookmobile. We want to welcome you to our Black History Celebration and the National African American Read In. The National African American Read In is a groundbreaking effort to encourage communities to read together centering around African and African American books and authors. It was established in 1990 by the Black Caucus of the National Council of Teachers of English to make literacy a significant part of Black History Month celebration. And we are pleased to have special guests from the Board of Education reading for us this year to highlight the importance of reading. Frederick Douglass quote, quoted, once you learn to read, you will be forever free. And we are so happy that we are free uh, through the reading of books, seeing books that, uh, pictures of books that look like us and authors who look like us. So our special guests for this year's National African American Read-In are the Superintendent of Schools for the Sample Pub Public, Life, Public Schools, Dr. Tamu Lucero and members of the Stanford Public uh, Board of Education. Uh, we have Ms. Janine Burke, a board member, Mr. Andy George, Mr. Fritz Cherry. We also have some young people reading for us this year and you will see them each week as we bring uh, reading uh, to, to the Stanford uh, community and other, and other locations. We look forward to seeing you every Saturday and during the month of February to hear from our Stanford Board of Education members beginning on Saturday, February 5th at 11 p.m. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you and happy reading. Hi, my name is Janine Peoples-Burke and I am a member of the Stanford Board of Education. I'm here today to read a story to you. I Got the School Spirit by Connie Schoenfeld Morrison. I'm loving that hair. She's ready to start her day. Look at that bedroom. <laughs> Summer is over. My first day is here. I got the spirit to start the new year. She's still in her jammies. I slip on the spirit in my shiny new shoes. Stomp, stomp. And her shoes match her shirt. I fill up my tummy with the spirit sunny side up. Sizzle. I like a hard boiled egg. I pack my book, my book bag with the spirit. Zip, zip. Her mommy wrote her a nice little note for her lunch. I see the spirit driving up the street. Vroom, vroom. Look at all those kids at the bus stop. I share the spirit with the new friend next to me. Oh, maybe it's her first day at school? A new school? It's nice to have friends. I breathe in the spirit to calm my nerves. In, two, three. Out, two, three. Thank you. 
I wait for the Spirit to call my name. Here. That's a colorful classroom. We sing the Spirit loud and clear. A, B, C, one, two, three. I pass the spirit over to a friend. Everybody's got sandwiches and apples. I kick the spirit high in the air. Kapow! Recess is my favorite time of day. I listen to the spirit weave a story. Once upon a time. Look at everybody interested in the teacher's story. I wonder what they're reading. I jump when the spirit splits the air. What's it say? No homework. I guess the day is over. I fear the spirit in a big hug. Mm. Everybody's saying goodbye until tomorrow. And welcome home. The school spirit helps us all strive and grow. I can't wait to see what I'll learn tomorrow. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Hello, I'm Judy Cruz, and today I'm here to read to you Sue Wave by Lupita Nyong'o. Sue Wave was born on the color of midnight. She looked nothing like her family, not even little, not even at all. Mama was the color of dawn, Baba was the color of dusk, and Mitch, her sister, was the color of high noon. Hardly anyone at school looked like Sue Wave either. People gave her sister, Mitch, pet names like Sunshine and Ray and Beauty. People gave Sue Wave names like Blackie and darky and night. Suwe fell hurt every time. So she hid away while her sister made lots of friends. Suwe dreamed of being the same color as her sister. She wanted real friends too. So she got the biggest eraser she could find and tried to rub off a layer or two of her darkness. That hurt. She crept into Mama's room and helped herself to some, and helped herself to her makeup. Oh no, she would hear about this from Mama. So Wei decided to work from the inside out and ate only the lightest, brightest foods. With a stomach ache, she went to bed early and turned to God for a miracle. Dear Lord, why do I look like midnight when my mother looks like dawn? Please make me as fair as the parents I'm from. I want to be beautiful, not just to pretend. I want to have daylight. I want to have friends. If you hear me, my Lord, and I would, and would like to comply, may I wake up as bright as the sun in the sky. Amen. When Mama came in, t when Mama came in to wake her for school the next morning, Sue Wei rose to find not a trace of daylight in her midnight skin. Sue Wei told Mama everything. Mama asked, "What is your name?" 
Suwei, she muttered. And what does that mean? Star, Suwei whispered. Brightness is not in your skin, my love. Brightness is who you are. As for beauty, Mama said, rubbing Suwei's stomach the way she always did to comfort her. You are beautiful, Suwei sighed. Well, you're beautiful to me, but you can't rely on what you look like to make yourself feel beautiful, my sweet. Real beauty comes from your mind and your heart. It begins with how you see yourself, not how others see you. Now, up you get and out you go. How could she, as dark as she was, have brightness in her? How could she have beauty when no one but her mother seemed to see it? How could she be a star? That night, a shooting star appeared from Suwei's window. The night sent me, the star said. Come with me. Suwei hopped onto the star and off they went. Long ago, at the beginning of time, said the star, there was night and day, and they were sisters. They loved each other very much, but people didn't treat the sisters the same. People gave day pet names like lovely, nice, and pretty. People gave night names like scary, and bad and ugly. She felt hurt every time. Well, Night got fed up and walked right off the earth. Day stayed behind and enjoyed making everyone happy in the sun. But then Day grew too long. Day began to, re to really miss her sister. So did everyone else. There had to be a way to get her back. Day set off to find Night, and she did. I miss you, said Day. I miss you too, said Night, but you don't know what it's like to be treated badly for being dark. You're right, I don't, Day replied. But, I do n but what I do know is that we need you just the way you are. Come in soon. Night returned and the people rejoiced. We need the darkest night for the deepest rest, and we need you so that we can grow and dream and keep our secrets to ourselves. The stars chimed in. Brightness isn't just for your daylight. Light comes in all colors, and sunlight can only be seen in the dark. While day had a golden glow, with night, everything had a silver sheen, elegant and fine. Day told her sister, when you are the darkest is when you are the most beautiful. It's when you are the most you. Could it be, th could it be th that night did not need to change, not even a little, not even at all? Now that night and day were back together, a little bit of night returned to day in the fo form of shadows, and a little bit of day returned to night in the form of moonlight. They were inseparable from, the mo from that moment on and promised to celebrate the brightness in each other, whether people chose to see it or not. You see, the star explained, we need them both on the sunniest day and the darkest night and every shade in between. Together they can make the world we both know light and dark, strong and beautiful. Su Wei rose the next morning, beaming. There would be no hiding anymore. She belongs out in the world, dark and beautiful, bright and strong. And if she ever needed a reminder of her brightness, she would look out at the sky on the darkest night to see for herself. Su Wei felt beautiful inside and out.
the end.